A Certain Magical Index is a series that I had next to no knowledge on past knowing that its fandom has stuck around for so many years wondering if they'd ever get that third season. So I figured any fandom that sticks around for seven or so years must be doing so because the series is pretty decent. And after coming out of its two seasons and a movie, I can say yeah, it is. It's hard to break down what this series is or wants to be as at times it feels like a battle shonen with how fight scenes are directed, or how its female cast is directed to be this harem but not harem all at the same time, or how many scenes are more slice of life comedy designed. But anyone looking for a fun cast of characters will more than likely find something to enjoy about this anime. Our main character named Toma lives in a world where the supernatural is woven into everyday society and Academy City is home to residents that make up three fourths of its population who are developing their esper abilities in various institutions. But this being anime, our main character is the lowest rank possible, sitting at rank zero. Luckily for him, since it's still anime, he also has an ability known as Imagine Breaker that can basically negate other supernatural abilities. You have magic clashing with science, characters dealing with memory loss, and the idea of a corrupt higher organization, but for the most part it's the story of Toma and his daily life with those he interacts with and decides to help as the story slowly unravels to what's going on behind the scenes of this city and its main groups. The pretty interesting thing with this series is how little the show tries to actually be one style of anime. Some arcs are more action heavy, mirroring most battle shonens where characters will overly explain what they are doing and why they are doing it, going over every little detail to their attacks and making battles that normally would take just a couple of minutes into overly dragged out but fairly entertaining fights. But then you'll enter these harem light arcs and scenes where a new female is in trouble and our hero Toma comes in to save the day to layer himself into the female's mind making her slowly fall in love with him, but more often than not it tries to be this weird slice of life comedy where it's the daily life of Toma and his overly clingy roommate Index who though has a very cliche personality actually ends up becoming a really sweet and entertaining character to follow with how she interacts with Toma. Somehow this series makes all that work more often than not. Now as someone who enjoys most styles of anime, this series actually works out quite well for me, because it's refreshing to have each arc not function exactly the same as the last. Sure, the core foundation is similar, you know Toma and his ability will be the key to each arc more often than not, or what to expect from the overall cast relationship, but it never feels exactly the same as the last story that you witness, and you don't always know if the arc will serve a bigger purpose to the main plot, or if it will just remain as a self-contained story. Early on, they establish a pretty interesting narrative, first surrounding these grimoires and index his head, then moving on to memory loss, but quickly move past that, which was a bit of a letdown with how easily the character navigates lost memories. But the daily life of Toma and what he gets himself caught up in always remained entertaining, mainly due to his drive to help those in need, where most would run away. A lot of what you see in this series is actually pretty typical, I mean most of the core personalities are tropes, and quite a few actually remain just that. But because this is a fairly mystical and technologically advanced world with some interesting mechanics such as Imagine Breaker, Espers, and how science is portrayed trade in this world, it lends itself to feel unique enough just to get the job done. Especially since it layers in so many cliches and styles, it almost builds an anime that somehow becomes more interesting because of how much there is to either love or hate about it. So even when the typical was around because it was surrounded by such a wide array of characters and styles, it honestly didn't bother me too much and felt distinct. The world and how it's explored isn't the greatest thing ever, or one that will stick out as some of the best world design of all time, in fact it's pretty typical. Just there happens to be some espers, magic, or more advanced text sprinkled off and on with these mysterious elements backing it. But what I like about this fairly traditional but interesting world is how these characters blend in with it, with how espers and science relate to one another, how religion and magic are woven into society, how schools train them to advance their abilities but it never actually feels like the standard magic academy anime, but rather it's a normal school anime that they just so happen to learn about these scientific anomalies. Hell, Toma is usually busy with more hands-on experience with his abilities than the school-based education which really never helped him all that much. Action the series is pretty repetitive, but remains fairly entertaining. When it comes to Tomba, there's only so much you can do with a man who will punch or touch things to negate them without much struggle. But I will give credit where it's due and say I was impressed by how often they managed to find new ways to make his ability interesting and how it related to the arcs. Granted, it's not always that entertaining and sometimes it feels dragged out, but it's impressive how they managed to make so many episodes revolving around a man who touches things to negate them and make it pretty thrilling. Like I mentioned earlier, the fights function like your traditional battle shonen. So anyone not fond of overly long and dragged out action sequences, 
with more dialogue than logically needed, will find them pretty annoying. But usually the action isn't the star of the episode, so even if you dislike the fight sequences, it shouldn't bother you too much, since most of the time it's dialogue and slice of life interactions which are usually the star. Some of the side characters had pretty interesting fight scenes though, such as Accelerator and Misaka. But no matter who was fighting or what type of magical abilities were being used, it all felt more or less the same each time, with how the anime clearly stuck to one formula for its action scenes. It never really blew me away, but it usually entertained me at the very least. When I said the series is harem light, I'm sure some will want to say it's not a full on harem, but the core structure to these arcs and the females that Toma interacts with really feel like the traditional harem formula. I mean, you can almost always expect whoever he punches to join his ever growing harem that isn't a harem but totally is. Of course, most relationships don't go anywhere past friendship or the slight wink and a nudge that someone likes Toma through blushing or other not so subtle clues, but never will it really go anywhere. But it definitely feels like a harem. I will say, the way these relationships grow and develop is pretty solid all around, with Misaka's relationship to Toma being my personal favorite since how it starts off and where it ends later down the line is really well executed and left a lasting impression on me. But all Toma's connections, be it friendships, enemies, or anything else, always managed to entertain me, and even when I wasn't wowed by someone, Toma made all their arcs either hilarious or fascinating as long as he was in them. My biggest gripe with this series is also one of my favorite points to it, and it's how this anime never feels like it knows exactly what type of show it actually wants to be. On one hand, this lets arcs and general conversations feel fresh and exciting as you never truly know what is it going to be. Will it be more mysterious, more supernatural, battle shonen wise, or maybe a slice of life or potentially even drama based arc? But because it never feels grounded in one particular genre or style, I was often left with this feeling of something was missing. A more relevant plot with less emphasis on singular stories, greater sense of danger and sacrifice were just for the series to stop dipping its toes in one genre and style to quickly move on to the next. There will be these moments that you think, wow, that's actually pretty emotional. A great sacrifice was made to then, just kidding, I can regenerate my body, so I'm good. Or how the issue with memory loss made me think, oh, this will actually be a pretty big challenge for the character since they have to pretend that they remember everything that they just forgot. But how little they actually had to work for it starting the very next episode, and that's pretty disappointing. It just feels like because it never tried to be one style of anime, often when it brought up really interesting ideas or themes, the ones that would have worked exceptionally well were brushed aside and forgotten so the author could move on to the next big idea that they had. On one hand, it makes for a series that rarely feels repetitive, but on the other, it makes for a series that could have been so much more, as it constantly brought up these ideas or themes that I wanted to have a bigger impact on its characters and world than they actually did. As well, depending on your take on sexual fan service, this series will either test your patience or make you love it even more. Now, for myself, it tested my patience on more than one occasion. I will say that Accelerator made every arc about 20 times better whenever he graced the screen, since he was the one character I never knew what would happen whenever he was on screen, since most characters are pretty easy to read, whereas he was a wild card, and my favorite part of this entire show so far. I do think there's a lot to enjoy with this series, and coming out of the second season, I'm very excited to watch the third when it ultimately concludes. An interesting aspect with this anime is how it never tries to have a beginning, middle, and end in the standard way, but rather, after the setup in the first six or so episodes, it's just about exploring the city with each arc serving as its own kind of self-contained story, to then every so often showing the next big story arc to remind the viewer there is actually a main plot here but often they just sprinkle in these small hints and clues to these other arcs to keep the viewer interested in its world and ultimately its end goal. The way different characters mesh with our central lead and how relationships progress over the two seasons is quite enjoyable. This isn't really a series where deep diving one character or arc is really that enjoyable past Accelerator since he's just the best character, as it's one of these anime that uses its large cast of characters and interesting arcs to craft a thoroughly enjoyable anime in this building block fashion, which ends up becoming something worthwhile not because of of one particular area, but because of the combination of multiple ones. By themselves, most characters are pretty forgettable, but when combined with Toma and the others, it becomes something worth recommending. Now visually, A Certain Magical Index felt pretty standard for the time, with the first season airing between 2008 and 2009, and the second season airing between 2010 and 2011, it feels like the overall character designs and animation match those years well enough. It doesn't really feel dated, but nothing is that remarkable about it. General character designs won't blow most fans away since many feel like cutouts from other anime, with the rest having a few memorable features to help them stick out. I do like how the show looks from the general designs, backgrounds, and even how they animate the fight scenes but I can't really say I was blown away in most episodes. The magic or supernatural elements to the series is easily the best looking content within the anime and holds up really well, with everything else just getting the job done but not really being all that impressive, at least for myself. 
but I do appreciate how little it seemed to dip from the quality that it laid out early on. Since the anime often had characters talking, it never really felt like it needed to be all that flashy, and then when it should have more eye candy, they upped their production game. Though I wasn't wowed by the visuals that often, I don't think I needed to be with the style of show that this actually was, but more originality with the character designs would have been nice. When it comes to the voice acting, I actually really enjoyed it within the series. There's quite a few tropey designs that I generally despise such as the lolly teacher, but the voice acting helped make them tolerable and at times even enjoyable. Each character felt really anime, those kinds of voices you naturally wouldn't hear in day to day life, but felt right at home in this weird world balancing this walk of reality and fiction. Toma generally had a grounded voice, but each episode he'd have these moments of pure anime tones that were just enjoyable to listen to. Index had a really cute and hilarious voice that made her character one of the most enjoyable within the series. Really, if it wasn't for how these characters sounded with how lines were delivered, I wouldn't have had as much fun as I did with most arcs and characters. Some of these actors felt like they were just having fun in the recording booth, with the others just feeling right at home within this cast. When it came to the music, I actually really enjoyed this too, especially the more electronic songs that would play often in action scenes, or how most tracks felt like they matched the many styles the anime played around with quite well. There's nothing that groundbreaking with the OST, or I'd even say raised the bar with originality, but all the music perfectly matched the scenes that they were in, and often you wanted to dance along to them. Really, this OST is the perfect example of something not being original or that creative, but being so damn perfect for the series that it's in. A Certain Magical Index is a fairly interesting anime, and one I'd recommend to anyone looking for a large cast of characters with fun personalities, with an interesting take on magic due to how it relates to science more often than not. Just know it does have issues. A lot of the really interesting aspects to its story or world get forgotten more often than they don't, and it does feel like this is a series that had a lot more potential potential if it wasn't wasted as much as it was. But with all that said, it's still a very enjoyable binge and I quite look forward to watching its third season, so I award the series my seal of approval. If it wasn't for Toma and how he interacts with these characters, I'd have ranked it lower, also Accelerator. But because of how fun their personalities were and the overall development they had, they really hold the show together quite well. Sure, many characters remain as fairly barebones personalities, and a lot of interesting aspects to the stories feel held down by a lack of true antagonists, but I can't help but be entertained by this series and its lovable cast of characters. Now obviously, if you want to watch something similar to A Certain Magical Index, watch its spin-off that so many recommend, which if I do enjoy, probably will also receive a review at some point in time. But that's all for this video, let me know your thoughts on the series or my review down in that comment section below. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy, and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me in the future. Future. There's also always my Patreon where you can directly fund and support the channel for as little as a single dollar a month if you so wish, but until next time everyone please take care and have a good one.